so uh, this is one thing so so far we have done uh, how to use the is code design uh, properties for calculating the moment resistance for single reinforced section as well as for double reinforced sections now let's uh, briefly talk about uh, how to analyze this flanged sections so usually in a reinforced concrete construction um, uh, when you go for a monolithic uh, construction when cast in place construction everything is cast together you set up homework and then you cast everything together okay and floor systems and slabs and beams are always placed in monolithic board that means they are all poured together concrete is poured together so a part of the slab acts as a top flange to the beam okay depending upon the location of the beam whether it is actually on the on the edge of the uh, building or is an interior uh, beam it can either act as a t beam or act as an l beam okay inverted l beams spandrel beams so depending upon the location of the beam a portion of the slab will act as a beam uh, and uh, edge beam will have this kind of uh, l shaped flanges the middle interior beam will have this kind of uh, t sections that again also depends upon whether you are looking at the mid span or at the support for gravity loads okay so we'll see now i'm taking a, a simple free body diagram of a, a beam that is an as a part of a continuous system which is undergoing bending like this you can see clearly that okay so this is a sagging moment that you have cracks on the uh, mid span location then you have hogging moment that is creating some cracks on the support location right so this is how it is going to bend so it is going to develop tension at the support at the top and then tension at the bottom at the mid span location so uh, so if i am taking sections at different locations for example if i am taking a section right here uh, at this location at aa so how is it going to uh, look like so i am going to have uh, there may be a situation that uh, this is a sagging bending moment right so the flange is actually in compression okay or in other words this t sections the flange is actually in compression the bottom portion wherever you have kept reinforcement that is in tension so but there may be an another situation the the depth of the neutral axis for example xu here can become greater than depth of your flange so it's when your neutral axis is less than the, th the thickness of the flange in fact this entire concrete compression can be calculated from your rectangular stress instead of b you have to use bf in your cc calculation which is your concrete portion compression but in this case when your neutral axis depth becomes more than your thickness of the flange or depth of your flange now what you have is uh, you have a t shaped area compression area where a web is resisting and also portion of the flange is resisting in compression so the b that what i need to use in my cc calculations it will not be constant it is changing right because if i take right at the top the entire flange width will be contributing to compression if i am taking at the web only the bw that will take contributing compression now for the same uh, though the slab is part of the beam if i am taking a section at the support now tension and compression are reversed okay though i have a flange but the flange is not going to contribute in compression so whatever the steel that is there now it is going to be at the top at the flange location that will uh, take tension now the compression side will be only rectangular okay so even though, though they are casted together depending upon the section where i am taking you can have different scenarios at the support location the compression is going to be at the bottom not at the flange side and at the mid span you can have two scenarios either your neutral axis depth required for compression can be within the thickness of the flange or it can be outside the thickness of the flange okay that has to be appropriately considered in your analysis okay so this is what we have said for a, a t section like this you can have a situation the neutral axis if it is falls within the slab depth then you can analyze the beam as a regular rectangular beam instead of using b then we'll use bf in that calculation okay so where b here is actually clear okay
and if the neutral axis is falling higher than the slab depth then we have to analyze the beam as t section where you will have two things two areas that we need to be considered like this right so let's see how to do that calculation now between the center line of the beam okay so you can also the code ask you to consider a portion of the uh, flange width which is effective in resisting this applied bending okay so effective flange width is nothing but portions near the webs which are more highly stressed than the areas that are away from the web so again there is going to be a transverse distribution of your stresses but the flange which is very close to the beam at the top is going to offer more resistance okay so the code saying that you don't need to consider that variation you consider that effective flange width in your calculation so this is how we get so the effective flange width is nothing but your v that is basically the portion of the flange that is assumed to be effective in resisting this applied loads okay so that b so the b is actually function of your bw plus what is the clear spacing between the two beams okay so we will see how the b is defined okay so or in other words b effective is the width that is stressed uniformly to give same compression force actually developed in compression zone of width b actual okay so this is the stress variation that you are going to have so you are going to have high stress variations here close to this beam and then as you go away from here it will die down okay so so what the code is saying is okay you can take the entire thing to be an average stress distribution and then that portion is taken as a effective width so that is going to give uniformly stress though it is not going to be uniformly stress which is going to give we are assuming uniform stress distribution so that the same compression force can be achieved when you are using effective width okay so now how does the is 456 defines this effective width for t beams it is defined as bw plus 6 times the thickness of the flange or depth of the flange plus l0 by 6 now what is l0 l0 is actually distance between the points of zero moment in a continuous system in a continuous system you know that moment will be negative and positive and there will be a point of counterflexion in between so l0 is nothing but the distance between the points of counterflexion so for t sections it is this is the effective width we need to consider for l section it is going to be l0 by 12 plus bw plus 3 times the thickness of your flange now for when you have an isolated beam okay and we don't have a continuous system then the effective flange uh, can be obtained as given in this equation which is basically l0 by l0 by b plus 4 plus bw and then for your l beam this is the equation that is specified in your s456 so this is basically recognizing the fact that when you have a sagging moment at the mid span there is a flange that is also effectively resisting your applied compression uh, for applied moment so that you have to take it in your calculation so if you take your flange width in fact your neutral axis you know your your lever arm will increase okay because you need very small neutral axis depth to achieve your force equilibrium then your moment resistance also will will go up. okay now in this formula bf is basically effective width of the flange and l0 as we have discussed it is a distance between the points of zero moments in the beam and bw is the breadth of your web tf is the thickness of the flange and b is your actual width of the flange now again what is the actual width of the flange which is basically from center line to center line the spacing that we take but that entire width will not be effective as a, as a flange we have to reduce that and in the form of b which is your b effective right so where all these things what type of different sections are possible you can have a single t sections you can also have double t uh, sections which are commonly used in parking garages and uh, like this okay this double t can be converted into a equivalent single section like this because in flexure uh, it can be considered as an equivalent section similarly these kind of box sections can also be converted into an equivalent i sections and uh, the equivalent i sections we know that when the uh, when it is under bending the flange width will contribute in compression right so now let us see uh, how the uh, uh, the analysis is done using the is uh, 446 provisions so we have no, we know that uh, when if let's say two scenarios that we talked about the neutral axis can lie within the thickness of the flange tf that means 
you have a constant width that is effective in compression. So again, the same strain distribution. We take epsilon CO of 0 0.0035 at ultimate, and then a strain in the steel is taken as epsilon ST. Of course, this has to be greater than your yield strain specified in your code. And then uh, depending upon the amount of steel. But uh, when you are designing, you want to make sure that you put steel in such a way that epsilon ST will reach higher than epsilon Y value. Right? So in this case, the analysis is pretty straightforward. If you excuse less than DF, and this is your uh, stress block, and your CC is also, you know, which is equal to 0.36 FCK B times X. Now B is going to be BF. Okay? Here, you, what you do is you put instead of the bf that's it right now you can have an another situation where your neutral axis depth can go uh, more than your depth of your flange okay now we know that in this case if you look at it in your stress block we have two portions okay now if i take this as xu now constant portion is for how much distance it is going to be for 3 seventh of your xu and this is going to be for 4 7th of your x. So we know that. Okay. Uh, now, depending upon your depth of the flange is less than 3 7th of xu, then it will become, uh, or depth of the flange is uh, more than your 3 7th of your xu, then it becomes, you can take a constant stress block in your calculations. And these are your stresses. So when the neutral axis is falling outside this, thickness of the plants. The code is saying simplifying you will have different scenarios. So let us not worry about it. The code is saying that like this. Okay. So DF can be sometimes less than 3 seventh of your XC. Then the, what the code is saying is you can take an equivalent of flange width in your calculations, the YF, which is defined as when uh, uh, when XU by DF is more than 7 third, then YF can be taken as DF. Okay, and then when it is between when x u by d f is between one and seven third, you take that as an equivalent dimension as 0.15 x u plus 0.65 d f. Okay, so basically what we are doing here is we are the flange contributions are separated the, as a two things. Okay, which is c u f and c u w. Now what is c u f is basically only the overhang portions that we are taking. So, if you go back here, okay. So, CUF is nothing but your, uh, this is your CUF, which is nothing but 0 0.447 FCK multiplied by BF minus BW times by F. Now, again, YF value depends upon what is the uh, value of your neutral axis depth and your, when, when X use the uh, greater than df this this equation will will come so again when x is greater than df yf value depends upon two values you can you can you can have two scenarios when as we have discussed so you just follow is an idealization uh, to simplify the calculations of your flange contribution for your compression then the moment contributions of this flange also we can take a cu times now that uh, uh, this is going to be at a distance of yf by 2 then uh, CUF multiplied by this is nothing but your lever arm. Okay, so we'll we'll see it in the next slide. So you can see here. Now for this strain distribution, these are the stresses in the web. Now the web is taken as an entire area. So the web contribution is very straightforward. So instead of B, we use BW. Now for the flange contributions, what we have to use is we have to use BF minus BW is the total width. That is this width and this width. So let's say this as 2 and this is 2. So these both of them, I have to add them. This is your 1, which is your web contribution. So the concrete contribution, now we are dividing them into two things. So this is your web and this is your flange and this is your tension force from steel. Of course, this is compression of web, this is compression of flange, which should be equal to tension. Now, once we have, okay, what is the expression for your CUW uh, now? So, CUW is 
basically if we go back what is cuw cuw is nothing but this okay so this entire thing so this is your cuw so what is cuw again this entire thing is going to be 0.36 fck bw xu is nothing but your cuw okay now what is this cuf cuf is nothing but now this entire thing is assumed to be equivalent wires right so 0.45 fck now the area that is resisting is only that outside flanges which is bf minus bw so maybe I'll erase this right times oil okay these are the forces now where these forces are going to act this lever arm you know which is 0.42 xu and this lever arm you know it is going to be yf by 2 so when i take moment of this about this tension force i am going to have one from web and another one from flange so we can write this as muw and this is muf now what is muw muw is force from cuw okay which is this times your lever arm which is d minus 0.416xu now this is your cuf and this is your lever arm okay which is your lever arm for your compression plans conduction so when you add them up you get your total moment resistance okay so in this way we can do our flange section analysis also okay so we can summarize whatever that we have discussed in this model uh, okay we discussed the design aspects of section without compression reinforcement then we also discussed how analyze the uh, section with uh, compression reinforced section uh, compression reinforcement that is your w reinforced sections and then we also talked about how to analyze the flanger sections and then we also uh, did the calculations using is codes we took some several couple of examples and we did how to do the calculations for finding the amount of steel for single reinforced section similarly for a demand of 1500 kilometer meter we saw how to calculate the amount of steel for double reinforced section then we also calculated uh, capacities and compared with what we did previously using moment curvature analysis so we found that the is code provisions are a conservative from 15 to 20 percentage uh, but uh, and uh, because design codes have to estimate the capacities in a conservative way so that the IS codes were uh, doing a uh, reasonably good job in terms of predicting the capacities in a conservative way so with this we will complete this flexural module we will start with uh, shear in the next part of the video thank you